let's begin introduction and framework first of all for introduction let me just reiterate once again do not think this is a session for scoring personal engagement and this is something that you have to show throughout the whole I report right so it's not just about introduction so sentence like uh, something like when I was a child I'm fascinated with blah 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 uh, fascinated with cars or etc that would not be meaningful right so try to say uh, something that is fully relevant to the physics concept that you are studying and also something else so what exactly do you need to talk about uh, will be here let's take a look so you will want to show something that is uh, describing and explaining why this is scientifically interesting so what it means it could be how is this related to the daily life it could be not just your daily life it could be general people's daily life okay uh, it could also be uh, how do we have more advantages if we understand this so for example um, when you study the transformer maybe there is some factors that you can study so that in in that case when we try to convert the voltage from one to another uh, it will be the most efficient or it could be studying some other things like uh, how the safety cushion right the volume of it will be uh, the most effective or it could be something like how uh, a certain energy resources for a certain factor it could uh, generates the most energy other than that uh, you should also talk about the past research so this part is a little bit uh, similar to what you do for literature review in EE as well um, what you could talk about is you may uh, try to state also oh, in maybe in the past there's a researcher a doing a certain methodology and somehow you thought of another methodology that you want to try and compare the method or it could be a different range of independent variable so maybe uh, he or she was studying a certain range of temperature which was only range from say uh, 20 degrees celsius to say 60 degrees celsius and you want to expand that to maybe up to 100 degrees celsius or uh, go lower up to say a negative 10 degrees celsius and that of course would be very helpful in pushing our understanding towards the world or it could also be uh, if you say oh you find out researchers a b c and maybe they have a little bit difference in terms of their result maybe some of them find out the um, equation is different from the others um, or maybe it's just the coefficient uh, like you know maybe in some equation it could be like a equal to k uh, x square right or something like that right not not a actually it should be y right y equal to k x square and maybe that k is just simply different from different researchers so maybe you want to find out uh, how that would be affected um, when you talk about those researchers you may also want to to show more in-depth information uh, especially about their research finding and that could be show more directly by showing their graphs so whatever independent dependent variable that they are doing uh, using the graph then you can show what they find out basically so maybe it's a linear relationship it could be a curve or whatever trend that they find out so telling us directly will be very useful if you can't find a graph or even a data table well actually if you can't find a graph you can actually use that data table to plot a graph by yourself worst case if you don't have anything at least you should be able to find the formula that they uh, suggest in their research paper for framework i would say this is like different from introduction so introduction you can talk about other people and also how that research question is going to be beneficial to our world or to yourself at least for framework is more focusing on the concepts that is related directly to your research question so what you should do is surely for 100 percent you should derive the relevant formula from the definition in physics so it could be like maybe you are doing mechanics then maybe f equals to ma or maybe you are doing um, 
circuits maybe you're relating to power then maybe power equals to IV or anything or voltage equal to energy over charge something like that right that by definition and then in that case uh, hopefully the best scenario is you can establish the relationship between your independent variable and dependent variable which should be seen in your research question directly if you really don't know how to derive it uh, and but if you could find the relevant formula from other people's research try to see how they prove it usually they do all right or at least try to search that formula on Google I'm pretty sure there is a certain way that people prove it uh, in a case where it is really come out from the experiment then uh, you should try to find more sources and see whether there's any difference from uh, each other researchers the other thing that is also very important and people overlook as well is you should also state the required assumptions here uh, which is needed to support the derived work that you show uh, above for example uh, you may be using some kinematics equation that we use well we actually learn it in IB right so it's actually quite simple but then you still need to clearly describe and state those assumptions because uh, we don't expect you to to know like everything in IB so you have to reiterate uh, what the assumption that is required and that is very useful later on maybe you find out throughout your whole experiment those assumptions actually was not met so that's why maybe your result is different from the theoretical one so for example maybe if you're using kinematics equation say uh, v squared equal to u squared plus 2as or other kinematics equation then you should remember that the assumption was a acceleration has to be a constant All right but maybe probably in the uh, actual situation in your practical activity uh, acceleration cannot be constant simply so that kinematic equation actually uh, made a false assumption or you can evaluate this at the end of your IE report or maybe you are, if you're doing something related to magnetic field uh, then maybe one of the assumption is uh, there's no external magnetic field maybe you have a magnet or a coil to produce the magnetic field in your experiment then maybe the assumption is there's no external that is probably the earth magnetic uh, was not considered in the framework so all these assumptions has to be stated very very clearly in the list next thing which again I find it would be extremely useful uh, to show a good personal engagement and also exploration that is if you could discuss uh, the relevant physics concept in your research question in the microscopic view that is a uh, particle view that would be nice I think most of the topics actually you could actually do microscopic view so especially for maybe thermal and also uh, EM topic or even waves as well uh, you should be able to this like talk more about the microscopic view so not just using the formula play around with the maps like we arrange them but also uh, you could explain microscopically uh, in a qualitative way and lastly here which is something I don't recommend is uh, to make a false claim or use uh, some very strange way uh, of guessing right w without any citation or scientific support um, some of you may thought may think of doing hypothesis and in fact in the document uh, from IBO they said hypothesis actually is not needed right it's, it's really just optional so I personally would say uh, I don't think making a hypothesis is too meaningful anyway I would just say uh, I'd rather you keep focusing on what you can derive in theory from the um, fundamental definition or from other people's research and that would be pretty good enough because quite often when you try to make a hypothesis then you you kind of make a false claim or you, you you try to use your intuition to to show to predict a certain result which uh, it would not be appreciated 